happy Thursday night. Uh, John from the Mirror. Hello, Mikel. I was just going to take you back to um, Aubameyang, please, if, if I may. Mm. I mean, it's most it's a, it's a positive drought when he doesn't score for five Premier League games, isn't it? But he's such an infectious character. He's got such a such a pedigree. How do you re- reinstall that kind of confidence back into uh, such a prolific goal scorer to get your back scoring? Well, if you're asking me about any other player, probably I would say that uh, we have to do a lot of work with his confidence. With Oba, I don't think it's a case of that. Um, again, from our side, we have to give him more opportunities, more shots, put him in, in better positions, um, try to accumulate more players around him to create a better situation for him. And he needs to step in as well. And when that happens, that he has the, the right opportunity. And in these games, you're not going to have 10 um, playing against those blocks. He needs to make it happen like he did uh, a week ago in the Europa League. You know, he's so used to that. That seems to pay a lot of attention for him as well. That's why sometimes we have to change in positions because everybody, every team is going to be preparing things to stop him. And we have to bear that in mind. So we have to distract the opponent as well with other positions, with other movement, with other relationships in the pitch to try to accommodate him without, you know, losing him in the position that uh, that he's clinical. You you've been very adaptable. He's been you know you've praised his adaptability within the systems within the different formations. Is there a temptation to to put him back through the middle on an opportunity to kind yes. of? Get him, I think get that's back? a very that's a very possible thing, and uh, it would depend on the games. It would depend on uh, on who is around it with. I think it's very important to see who is around him and why we're doing it. You don't just the fact by by doing it, why we are doing that, and what we're gonna get uh, by doing that. The positive thing to that, but of course, is a is a very strong possibility to play him as a nine. Of course. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Finally, Sam from the Telegraph. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. Uh, you mentioned a bit earlier the centre back situation. It, it seems quite crazy that you've got eight in the squad, one out on loan, and yet you've only got two. I think that are available. You must feel like the unluckiest manager on earth. Mm, well, I don't think so. I feel really lucky to be where I'm sitting right now. But uh, this can happen, and sometimes when if you have ten, maybe we would have been in the same position. I feel really bad, for example, with uh, William Saliba because we decided because we had so many to leave him out of the squad, which uh, it was really hurtful for me to do, uh, hoping that Pablo as well was back in two weeks, but he had a setback. And then we don't have Pablo and we don't have William that he's fit and available to play. But um, yeah, when you make those decisions, uh, sometimes we cannot think about every possible outcome here. What, what do you put it down to, if anything? Is it to do with the fixture pile-up? Is it to do with the five subs or three subs? Or is it just bad luck? Well, um, I think there are different cases. Mostly we are carrying that injury from um, from, from last year. Uh, with Callum, it's exactly the same situation. Uh, back with Pablo, exactly the same situation. It was a surgery in, in his ankle, with David, he rarely gets injured. You know, we don't think it's a big thing, but it's something to keep him out um, for a few weeks. And um, and Rob is, is the same case. But I think with Rob, if anything, is the minutes, the amount of minutes that he has already played. Well, in the last nine or 12 months, he hasn't played, but he has to step in because we didn't have as well uh, many solutions there. So I think it's a combination of, of factors. Um, obviously, you mentioned William can't play tomorrow, but he obviously could be available on Sunday. Are, are you seeing the sort of progress in training that you might have expected or maybe a bit early on? Yeah, he is much better. I think he's in a much uh, better play. He's feeling more confident around the place as well. His language is improving. He's starting to understand much better what we're doing physically. He's played a few games with under-23s as well which uh, he needed because he didn't play any football in the last seven or eight months. So I think things are progressively getting better and better. And just lastly for me, just going back to the the Leicester game briefly, when you have a difficulty like you did in the second half, is your mindset to think of a plan B or or to go away and make plan A better? No, we need a plan B and C. And I always have the plan B ready, as you can see, uh, the way we end up playing with three very narrow strikers. And at the end, is how do you interpret it after those situations to where you want to take the ball first to generate some advantages for those players? Um, 
I think the game management in the last eight, ten minutes it wasn't good enough. We gave six, seven free kicks away, too many throw-ins away. We could not attack with the right intention. But it's something again that um, it needs more training and and improving. And and even though sometimes you do that, teams they are good at killing the game off. And and this is what they did. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys.